Hello everyone. Today we are going to start lecture 01 of class 8 mathematics chapter number 3 which is understanding quadrilaterals. In this lecture we are going to talk about introduction to the word curve and how do we classify different kinds of curves. Right. Now you must have seen curves like this. Again this curve is starting from a point A and you are finishing it at a point B. That is you are not completing the curve. Also if you have completed the curve then we call it this curve as a circle where you start from a point A and then you complete it at the same point B. Okay, where A and B are the same point, this is a circle. You must have also seen curves like this. When you start at some, you start the curve at some point A and you finish at some point B. This is also a curve, right? You must have seen curves like this. Again, this is also a curve. You must have seen a line. It is a line segment. Again, this is also a curve. Okay. So these are different kind of curves we have, which we have already seen in your previous classes. You might also have curves like this when you start from a point A and then you draw like this, right? You started from a point A and then you finished off at the same point. Let it be B. So A and B are the same point. So these are different kinds of curves which we have already seen. But what does this word curve actually mean? Okay. What is that common property on the basis of which we are calling all of these six figures as curves? So let me write the formal definition. So a curve is a plane figure. A plane figure. Again, what do we mean by the word plane? Plane means that if you are drawing it on a plane of paper that your pencil should not rise. Okay, that is the curve should remain on the plane of the paper. A plane figure formed by a plane figure formed by joining a by joining a number of points a plane figure formed by joining a number of points without lifting without lifting a pencil that is when you are drawing then your pencil should not rise without lifting pencil that is the curve should not be discontinuous right without lifting a pencil from the paper without lifting a pencil from the paper and without retracing any portion and without retracing any portion of the drawing other than the other than single points other than single points is called a curve so this is a huge definition right so let me explain it the definition simply says a plane figure formed by joining a number of points right so there are a number of points when we are joining a and b right there are number of point, points in between a and b there are number point number of points lying on this line so we are joining a number of points without lifting the pencil now what would happen if i lift the pencil let let me see suppose i start my journey from here this point a and then after drawing i lift up my i lift my pencil and then i again start drawing then you can see that here the graph becomes the curve becomes discontinuous that is there is a break in the curve okay so this will this will not be called a curve because we have lifted the pencil so this is what this word means that without lifting a pencil from the paper and without retracing any portion of the drawing other than single points now what do we mean by retracing retracing simply means suppose you have started a curve like this and then then you are coming back and you are retracing your curve and then you are moving somewhere then again you are retracing your curve and then you are moving somewhere so this is the portion you have retraced retraced that is you have overdrawn this again with the help of the same pencil so this is called retracing now you would say sir here also we have retraced it right but it is not it is allowing single point retracing that is when you are when you were drawing this you 
you cut the curve but only at a single one and then you move down this is not like if you had done like this even this even the small portion then this would be counted in retracing and this would not this would not be called as a curve right so retracing should not be allowed and if there is a retracing there is a need of retracing it should be a single point like in the case of circle we draw on the circle and then we stopped at the same point that is we do not retrace it more than at one point so this is the definition of curve and all of these figures which are drawn here are called curves now there must be some classification of curves there these are the curves but they are not similar they had some different properties so what kind of curves curves are we dealing with the first one is open curves now what does open curve mean so the formal definition says a curve a curve which does not what is an upper curve a curve which does not cut itself is called an open curve so how does a open curve look like how does a open curve look like so let me draw it so example for example we can have this now again this is an open curve right we are starting from a point a we are stopping at a point b and it is not cutting itself you can have another example as this was also an example of open curve again it is open it is not cutting itself then you can have as straight line segment a b again this is also open curve why it is open because it is not cutting itself right so it is not cutting itself any another point so that is why it is a open curve okay the next type of curves are simply closed curves now what are closed curves as a definition as a name suggest we can write the definition as a curve a curve which cuts itself a curve which cuts itself a curve which cuts itself is called a closed curve right that is a curve which cuts itself so there must be some intersection point of the curve with itself let me let me draw some curves for example you can see this this is a closed curve right why it is a closed curve because it is cutting itself at one point right so this is a closed curve because cut it is cutting itself you can have another example as again this is a closed curve because it is cutting at the same point right this is the intersection point it is cutting it itself at the same point also you can have circle as an example why because when you are starting at a you are finishing it at the same point again you are cutting the curve at a single point and you can also have example like this this is also a this is also a closed curve why it is closed curve because it is cutting at these points let me mark these points let me mark the points where it cuts itself so this is that point here this is at this point this is the point and this is the point where the curve cuts itself okay so these are called closed curves also we also have some some curves called simple closed curves now what does simple closed curve means and how they are different let me give a formal definition a closed curve is called a closed curve is called a simple closed curve if it does not if it does not pass through one point if it does not pass through one point more than once now what does it simply mean let me first draw some curves which are simple closed curve and then i'll explain what it means so let me give some examples so as to what are simple closed curves right 
let me give some examples which are simple closed curve for example you can have circle it is a simple closed curve do you know why because it is not retracing any point more than once okay it is not passing through one any point more than once a is the starting point in a is the end point okay so it is not passing the point more than once similarly you can have an ellipse like it the shape is called an ellipse this is also a simple closed curve okay these are simple closed curves now let me let me differentiate them from from the curves which are not simple closed curve these are simple closed curves okay let me draw some curves which are not simply closed for example c in this figure this curve this curve is intersecting this point more than once and also it is not doing by at the end point it is doing it continuously see these were the end points so they cannot be counted as crossing of the curve more than once but this curve is continuously crossing this point okay twice firstly it has already passed through this then we are following the shape and then this curve again passed through this point so this point has been repeated twice right this point has been repeated twice so this is not a simple closed curve this is not a simple closed curve okay so this is not a simple closed curve so these is the these are the concept of open curves closed curves and simple closed curves okay now let us talk about position of a point with respect to a curve now what does this simply means this simply means that if if i draw a curve let us say let let us take this as a curve okay and let let me mark three points here let the first point be a let the second point be on the boundary of the curve which is named b and let the third point be outside the curve which is c so these are the three points and the position of these three points with respect to curve is that a is inside the curve b is on the curve and c it and c is outside the curve so these are the position of a point with respect to curve okay so if we if we have drawn the closed curve on the plane of paper then it divides this plane into three parts okay so first we can say that points this curve has divided this complete space into three parts first part is the set of point which are inside the boundary okay so points lied points lying inside the boundary points lying inside the boundary or you can say inside the boundary or inside the or curve you can say inside the boundary or curve or the interior of curve or the interior of curve right so these are called points lying inside the boundary or curve and area of curve example a right so position of point with respect to curve are three there are three position the first one is points lying inside the boundary or the curve or the interior of curve right which is which is the example is b you can take another example as p you can take another example as q so a p q these are points which are lying inside the curve second are the points the points lying on the curve the points lying on the curve or the boundary of the curve the points lying on the curve or the boundary of the curve for example b you can take another point as x okay so these are the examples of points which, which are lying on the boundary of the curve so this black portion is the boundary right this is the boundary of the curve so this is the second position of a point which can which a point can take with respect to the curve okay with respect to curve so we have discussed two positions the position of point which are inside there are some points which are on the boundary and then there are some points which are outside the boundary like c you can take another example as t okay so there are points points lying outside the curve
outside the curve or the or the exterior of the curve right so these are the points which lie outside the curve you can have examples like c and t so these are the position of points okay so we have three positions of a point with respect to any kind of curve there are some points inside the curve there are some points on the boundary of the curve and then there are points outside the curve okay now what is called region okay the interior of the curve together with the boundary that is if you combine all these points a p q x and b so indeed the points lying inside the curve and the points lying outside uh, the points lying on the boundary of the curve they are together called region okay curve region so this was all about position of a point with respect to curve now let us come to the main topic which is polygons now since we have studied there are some different kinds of curves open curve simply simple closed curve closed curves we have already seen the position of points with respect to these curves so it is high time that we should talk about polygons now what is a polygon before giving a formal definition let me draw some common polygons which we recognize right for example we recognize this as a triangle okay we recognize this as a quadrilateral we recognize this as a pentagon right it has five sides so these are some polygons which we already recognize so what is the actual definition of a polygon let me write the actual definition a polygon in this word polygon poly means many okay poly the word poly means many so polygon simply means a closed figure having many sides and what can be the minimum number of sides it can be 3 so let me write the definition a polygon is a a polygon is a closed figure or a closed curve you can write closed curve or you can write closed figure so what is a polygon a polygon is a closed figure formed closed figure formed by the line segments line segments such that so polygon is a closed curve formed by the line segments such that first you can clearly see that these these are also the polygons and they are also formed by line segments but what does these line segments should satisfy as conditions okay to form a polygon so these are the two conditions the first condition is that no two line segments no two line segments the first condition is no two line segments intersect except at their end points what does it means let me explain it it says that the two line segments like if these are the line segments let the figure be a b c d so a b and c d a b and c b are two line segments and the end points of a b are a and b and that of c b are c and b now see they are intersecting each other but where do where are they intersecting they are intersecting at the end points b is the end point of a b and b is the mid point uh, end point of c b so the line segments are intersecting at nowhere but at the end points okay so they should not intersect anywhere without the end points let me tell let me show you what will happen if they do so if there are two line segments like this and if they are intersecting like this see these are the end points ab was the end point and cd is the end point of this line segment and if they are intersecting at any another point e not the end point then it is not a polygon not a polygon okay so this is not a polygon you cannot call it a polygon so what is the second condition which we should satisfy or the line segments should satisfy is no two line segments no two 
line segments with a common no two line segments with a common end points are coincident now what does this word coincident mean that is in the same line you can clearly see this quadrilateral has been formed with the help of four line segments a b b c c d and a d and any two line segments are not collinear okay now what does the word means if two line segments with a common endpoints are coincident that is they should not be coincident so if there are two line segments like ab and bc and they have a common point b then you can clearly see there that they have some angle with each other okay they are not coincident that is they do not lie on the same line segment they are not like if ab is this and bc is this okay so they are not on the same line okay so their angle is not 180 degree so they are not coincident simple coincident also means that the line segment should not each actually overlap each other okay otherwise they will be treated as the same line and they will not form a quadrilateral so no two line segments should intersect at points other than the end points and no two line segments with a common end point with a common end point should be coincident okay so they should always form some angle so that they can form a quadrilateral so this these are the two conditions which should be satisfied which should be satisfied by the line segments which are actually forming a polygon so this was the definition of polygon so polygon is nothing but a closed figure having some number of sides and those number of sides should be greater than or equal to 3 because two sides cannot form a polygon you can clearly see if i draw a polygon of two sides it is nothing but it is an angle so it is we have already studied that it is a open curve so it is not a closed so in order to close a curve you need at least three sides okay so the third side is needed so you can clearly see that the smallest polygon which we can have is a triangle okay so now let us talk about the sides and vertices of a polygon now since we have studied about polygons so these are some common polygons this is a triangle abc abcd is a quadrilateral and again abcd is a pentagon so these are all polygons so what are the sides of polygon what are the vertices so let me define what are sides now what are sides sides are the line segments which actually which are actually forming the polygon okay so the line segments you can say the the line segments forming a polygon are the line segments forming a polygon are called its sides whose sides polygons so example for example we can write um, ab ab is a side in triangle also ab is a side in a quadrilateral ab you can say ac you can say bc again we have another side called cd in these i am talking about these three uh, these three polygons right so they have different sides we also have a side name a so etc okay so these are the actual these are nothing but these are the line segments which are forming the quadrilateral what is bc bc is a line segment for this quadrilateral okay so it is also a side of a quadrilateral now what does what is mean by vertices okay what is a vertex or you can say what is vertices the end points of these line segments that is b what is the end point of line segment ab sir a and b what is the end point of line segment bc it is b and c okay so these are the vertices so we can say the end points the end points of the line segments the end points of the line segments are called are called its vertices right so the end points of the line segments are called its vertices for example what are end points this corner a is the end point for example a b c here you can have d 
d is also a vertex you can have e etc so these are the vertices the corner points these are what is this this is a vertex and together abc are called vertices okay what is ab it is side similarly what is b it is vertex what is ab it is a side okay so the end points of the line segments are called its vertices so these were all about sides and vertices of a polygon now let us talk about classification of polygons now i have already told you that we need at least we need at least three line segments to to form a closed curve which can be called as a polygon so to close the curve we need the third side otherwise it, it would be it would represent an angle so since there are three sides we call it triangle so number of sides are also three you can see that we have three sides and we have three vertices that is three corners similarly if the number of sides are four you can clearly see there are four sides so it is called quadrilateral when the number of sides are five they are called pentagons number of sides are six then they are called hexagon number of sides are seven then they are called heptagon you can clearly see there are seven sides number of sides are eight then we call it octagon for example first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh and eighth so there are eight sides eight sides so this type of figures are called octagon then for nine sides they are called nonagon for 10 sides they are called decagon and for n sides they are called n gun right so it can be it can be any number n so it should be greater than or equal to 3 that is you can have a polygon of as much sides as you want but the least but the least number of sides which make a polygon are 3 and they are called triangle and remember the chain remember the name of chapter the name of chapter is understanding quadrilaterals so we are going to talk about quadrilaterals at depth in this particular chapter right so these are the classification of polygons now again quadrilaterals can also be of many types okay triangles can also be many types so like equilateral triangle isosceles triangle okay you can have scalene triangles right angle triangles similarly you can have different kind of quadrilaterals like square rectangle parallelogram rhombus kite trapezium okay so they are further classified into their own categories so this is the classification of polygon then we can also classify this each uh, these polygons into different kinds of shapes right so the common point is that a triangle has three sides and three vertices quadrilateral has four sides okay you can clearly see four sides and four corners that is four vertices so this is the something which we have to remember now let us talk about what are adjacent sides what are vertices and what are diagonals of a quadrilateral right or any kind of polygon this is a quadrilateral because it has four sides you could have taken a pentagon you could have taken a hexagon you could have taken a triangle okay so what are adjacent sides what are adjacent sides so adjacent means nearby okay so these are the sides which have one point common okay like a b and a c a b and a d are adjacent sides because they have a point common so we can write the definition is adjacent any two sides any two sides with a common with a common end point what is the end point you can call it a vertex okay so what is the common end point it is called a vertex common end point are called are called the adjacent sides are called the adjacent sides of the polygon right so these are the adjacent sides example i am giving example with reference to this figure example ab ad these are adjacent sides example you can have cd and ad they are also adjacent sides etc there are four pairs you can have a b and b c you can have b c and c d you can have c d and a d and we already have a b and a d so there can be four pairs of adjacent sides in this particular figure 
they can be more when there are number of more number of sides okay right if, if we would have taken pentagon the pairs of adjacent sides could be more right so now let us talk about what are vertices so we have already talked about vertices a b c and d so we are talking about adjacent vertices so what are adjacent vertices vertices which are nearby the endpoints of the same side of a polygon are called adjacent vertices so what are what are adjacent vertices so let us talk about what are adjacent vertices okay so you can say you can say the endpoints you can say the endpoints of the same side the endpoints of the same side of a polygon are the endpoints on the same side of a polygon are the endpoints of the same side of a polygon are known as the adjacent vertices are known as the adjacent vertices For example, A, B, B, C, and C. B and C are what endpoints of the same side B, C. What is A and B? A and B are the endpoints of same side A, B. Okay, so you can have examples. Example A and B. So these are adjacent vertices. You can have example as B and C, and so on. Again, there will be four pairs of adjacent vertices A and B, B and C, C and D, and A and D. Okay, so the endpoints of the same line segment. Or same side of a polygon are known as adjacent vertices. Now let us talk about what are diagonals. Okay, we have already talked about sides A, B, B, C, C, D, and A, D are sides. Now what are diagonals? Let us talk about diagonals. So what are diagonals? These are the line segments obtained by joining vertices which are not adjacent. Okay, so these are. line segments line segments joining vertices line segment joining vertices which are not adjacent which are not adjacent okay so the line segments which are not adjacent are called Sorry, the line segments which are joining the vertices which are not adjacent are called diagonals. Now let me draw a diagonal in this. So we can have two diagonals. Okay. So the line segment joining the non-adjacent vertices A and C again AC is a diagonal, and similarly BD is a diagonal. Okay. So we can have examples as AC and BD. Right. So these are these are the line segments joining the vertices which are not adjacent. So AC and BD are two diagonals. So this was all about adjacent sides, vertices, and diagonals. Now let us talk about what are convex polygons. Okay, since we have talked about polygons, so there are two types of polygons called convex polygon and a non-convex, or it is also known as concave polygon. So let us talk about what is a convex polygon. First, let me let me draw it and let me show you what is a convex polygon, how it is look like. so this is a convex polygon we know it as a is the name of trapezium but it is a convex polygon and what is a non convex polygon let us also talk about that okay so this is a convex polygon let us name a b c and d this is a polygon because it has four side this is also a polygon okay this is also a polygon because it also have four sides a b b c c d and a d okay and it also have four, four vertices but one of them is convex another is non convex that is it is also called concave so what does the definition actually says okay what is a convex polygon so a polygon a, a polygon is a convex polygon a polygon is a convex is a, a convex polygon if if 
if the line segment a polygon is a convex polygon if a line segment joining if a line segment joining any two points any of a line segment joining any two points inside it inside it lies lies completely inside it lies completely inside the lies completely inside the polygon okay so this simply says that if you join any two endpoints you can take an endpoint as uh, any any point in, even in the interior of the triangle if, if, or interior of the quadrilateral let us take this point now if we join this point to with this point you can clearly see the line segment lies entirely inside okay so can you do there the same for all the points you can say see it is it is also lying inside but if i choose first point to be this and second point to be this then the line segment drawing the points is lying outside it is not completely inside some portion of the line is outside and that is what the differentiating factor between a convex and a concave polygon okay so see clearly this line this line so the line was inside and when we joined these two points the line was a bit outside it was not completely inside there is one more thing there is one more property on the basis of which you can just whether the polygon is convex or concave all interior all interior angles of a convex polygon of a convex polygon are less than r less than 180 degree this is also a way in on the basis of which you can ide identify whether the polygon is concave or convex you can clearly see all of the angles a b c and d interred angles are less than 180 degree what is 180 degree angle this is 180 degree okay so a straight line is called 180 degree angle so all the interior angles of the convex polygon should be less than this 180 you can clearly see all the four angles are less than 180 but here angle a angle b and angle d are less than 180 but you can clearly see this angle internal angle angle c is greater than 180 degree okay since angle c is greater than 180 degree therefore this polygon is called convex polygon not concave polygon okay so this was all about convex polygon now let us talk about regular polygon so what is a regular polygon now a regular polygon is a polygon whose all the sides and angles are same as the name suggest it is that is regular polygon it is a polygon it is a polygon whose whose all sides whose all sides and all angles are equal so it is a polygon whose all sides and all angles are equal so it can also be called as equiangular or equilateral okay equilateral because all the sides are equal and equiangular because all the angles are equal so what are the examples of regular polygon and how they look like examples square square is a regular polygon is all the angles are equal and all the sides are also equal you can have as an equilateral triangle okay an equilateral triangle is also equilateral triangle is also a regular polygon um etc let me draw some of them let me let me draw now you can clearly see if this is a square then all the four sides are equal and all the four angles are also equal because they are all 90 degree similarly if it is a equilateral triangle then it is a regular figure that is all the three sides are equal and all the three angles are equal and we know each angle is to be of 60 degree so if abc is a right angle triangle and if abcd is a square then what the uh, what the uh, definition of regular polygon says that here ab is equals to bc is equals to cd equals to ad also angle a is equals to angle b 
is equals to angle C is equals to angle D. Here for this triangle AB equals to BC equals to AC and similarly angle A is equals to angle D is equals to angle C because they are all regular figures. You can also have regular pentagon. Okay. So regular pentagon would look like this. Okay. So regular pentagon would look like this. If ABCD is a rectang uh, regular pentagon, then all the sides AE, AB, BC, CD and AD are equal and all these angles are also equal. So this is the concept of regular polygon. So what is a regular polygon? Sir, any polygon which have all the sides equal and all the interior angles equal, it is called regular polygon. So this was all about this lecture in which we talked about the introduction of curves and introduction to polygons. That is what are polygons, how can we classify the polygons, what are sides, what are angles, what are diagonals and so on. Okay, so this was all about this lecture. Thank you for watching this lecture till end. I'll see you in the next lecture. Till then, goodbye.